you see okay good got it so now it's being live streamed so hi everybody thank you for joining us tonight um we are getting ready for summer and we're excited to get our kids hooked on reading and um i my face is big on this picture sorry i have to bring it down and so we have with us carlin and this is her passion and she's going to share with us her passion for how to help kids choose good books. So I'm going to turn it over to Carlin right now. Hi, everyone. Um, I appreciate Brooke inviting me to do this. And like she said, books definitely are um, is my passion <laughs> for sure. Um, so I wrote down a few things that I thought would be helpful for parents as you're approaching your summertime and you're wanting your kids to read. Um, I'm just gonna share what's worked for me um, as a librarian and with my students that has helped them. One thing I will say is never underestimate um, the power that you have with reading with your child. Um, they will grab that when they see you participating and soak that up. Uh, many times when I have a teacher who does a read aloud in their class, I will directly have their students come in. Where's the book? Where's this book? Our teacher just read this book. So they've got a great influence and that just shows you how um, important that is. So read with them. Don't just hand them a book and say goodbye. Now you'll have your avid reader, readers and they can do that. And that's not a problem. But when you have your reluctant readers, um, this will help a little bit. My younger students, so I would say first, second grade. Another thing to not underestimate is the nonfiction section. So they thoroughly love the world around them. And so any book that they can get, whether it's about sharks, um, whether it's about animals, um, anything of that nature, uh, they will check out those probably 70% versus the picture books, 30% because they're, they're in love with the world. It's new, it's brand new. And so what a great opportunity to read with them, um, those kinds of things. And you can both learn together. I always tell my students, you are never too old to learn. I will find a nonfiction book and learn something. And I will tell them, I didn't know that. And so it shows that you're never too old to keep learning. Um, one thing that I... I realized that it took me uh, several years to figure out. Uh, I used to have my kindergartners come in and they'd have to pick a book and they were so overwhelmed. I, I, you know, they couldn't decide. And then I had little girls and boys in tears because they just didn't know what to pick. And the time was up and the teacher was there and they had to leave. And it dawned on me that I'm gonna grab one of my carts. I'm go only gonna put probably about 15 picture books on one side, 15 nonfiction on the other side. And let's just see what happens. So I gave them their library card. I said, go pick a book, but you can only pick on the cart. They ran right over there, picked the book in no time and they were all lined up, not a tear. And that was literally seconds. And I thought, why have I not been doing this? So I just think that going, sometimes going in a library is just so overwhelming or they want them all, um, it's hard to choose. Now for the older ones, so I would say, you know, third grade, um, I only teach up to sixth grade. Um, when I have students asking me, what's a good book to read? What do you recommend? Uh, first thing I do is I ask them, what are, you, what are you interested in? So I go through the genres. So fantasy, um, hey, do you like magical things? Do you like dragons? Do you like animals that talk? And if I see that spark on their face, okay, then let's gear you toward a fantasy. Let's see what we can find. Or um, do you like technology? Do you like 
futuristic stories. Okay, let's go to science fiction. So you kind of get that, um, you know, going through those genres, then it kind of narrows down to what they like. And if it's like, oh, I'm not sure, I don't know. Well, maybe you just might like a realistic book, just a book of a story that can happen in real life. And let's start with that. I always say, start a book. And if you don't like it after a while, maybe it's not the right book. It's okay to say, this book just doesn't fit me. I'm gonna choose another one. I do that too. Um, it's it's got to capture my attention right away, or I'm just not interested and I'll never finish the book. So don't don't pressure them. You've got to, you've got to read the you know the whole thing, and I can't I won't let you get another one. Um, don't don't make reading either a chore or a punishment. The hate reading. So always make it some a good experience. Um. One other thing is sometimes <laughs> there are a lot of good choices, but it is getting more difficult uh, now. I will admit that um, even when I look for books, I kind of know what my students like, what my community um, likes as well. And so I try and gear that um, towards them. Um, so, it takes a lot of work. Some helpful hints. There's a, a, a great lady who comes once a year. We have um, a library um, conference here in Utah. All the librarians from the whole state come. And this lady has a blog. Um, her site is called kissthebook.org. So kissthebook.org. I love when she comes, she will do both secondary and elementary. But what I love about her site, if, if you click on there, you'll see um, towards the left, there's lots of stuff on there, but one thing that you can click on, it says yearly top 50 lists. So if you click on that, then you'll see, it will say Uelma elementary or secondary book frenzy. So that's the title of her class that she gives. And so she takes um, a group of books, nonfiction, picture books, uh, novels, and then she does just a little summary of each of those books. But what I really like, and if you as a parent, if this is really important to you, let's say, for instance, I looked up this one uh, book called Wild Oak. So she will have um, language, G, zero swears, zero Fs. And then she'll have mature content for middle grade. And then it will say violence, PG, animal caught in a trap and tormented. So that's why it's, she rated it PG and then it's for middle school. So I love that because it gives me more information than going to uh, a review and all you see is just the summary of the book. I have been fooled by summaries and I'll look at them and think, oh, that sounds like a good book, I'll get it. And then there are things in there that I'm like, oh darn, I wish they would have mentioned that, that would have been helpful. So that's what I really like about hers. Um, that she gives those things. And then it's helpful for you to judge what you want as a family um, and your child reading those books. So one thing that I did do is I made up, I just kind of went through my library and um, grab some books that I really loved and maybe you're familiar with or even if you're not um, these are books that there isn't any problem I feel like they they're pretty much representative by minority authors characters in the book um, you know very um, diverse and so 
you know, that's just something, you know, it's kind of interesting because I've never really paid attention. I mean, I just usually have just look for a good book, but um, we got to look at the positive side to say, okay, well, how can we make this good? Yes, there are some diverse authors and let's get their books and they've got a good book. Let's promote them. And so I will just read the list um, that I saw and that what's really popular at my school that my students like. And you can go check out them at the library, read the summary and see if it's a good fit for your child. So I'll, I'll start with that. Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk. Um, that's a realistic story of a girl um, that lives in a mountain with her family. Um, just, you know, some of these books, I think the stories are really good for students that maybe haven't experienced a different life than what they're accustomed to. So maybe living in a mountain where they're very poor, it gives them a window to a place that maybe they haven't seen before. And so I think that's good. Um, Carlin? Y yes. Are th these books that you're recommending, are these ones you've read? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I did not put down any book that I have not read. And can uh, we get this list from you? Is there a... Yeah, so I... I typed it up. Um, I'm happy to share that with you. And if you want to post it, that would be great. Um, do you want me to give you the names of these books or would you rather have just the list for everyone to look at? Um, I, you can go through and say what you liked about it because I'm curious for new books, like how they compare with classics, because I just bought all these illustrated classics for my nine and 11 year old, like Moby Dick, you know, all this stuff to just acquaint them with, with stuff that is good literature. And um, <clears throat> even though, you know, it doesn't have the beautiful prose because it's adapted. <laughs> um, and I'm like, hmm. Um, but the storyline still has those, um, it can give you insight into life on its own, which is the definition of a classic. So I'm wondering, as you're explaining this book list, what elements of these books appeal to you and teach the kids? You know, what would they like about it? And what, what does this uh, literature accomplish as far as like growing the, you know, the whole reason we read, like you just said, opening a window to the soul of being poor and living in a mountain. I love those details. And so... I yeah. do want to hear the, the list of books and, and kind of why, because I'm not always sure how, you know, you weigh it between this and a classic book. How, how do they compare, you know, when you're choosing for your kids? That's, that's true. Um, and I know, like, I, I do have some older revised classic books in my library um, that, unfortunately, they don't get checked out yeah. very often. And I think that's where the, the parent comes in to say, hey, let's give it a try and let's read it together. And I think those will help versus just giving it to your child. Um, they may not be quite as open to that. I love a book that tells a story. And then sometimes um, my 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 thoughts are that give them several books. So maybe have a, a classic book that you just want your child to open that window of some good literature. Second thing I would say is let them get a book they think that they want. And then a third, you know, or fourth, whatever so kind of get that balance that it's you know not just oh this is just the book my mom or dad wants to read me to read versus oh let's choose here let's choose there just like introducing a new food mm -hmm. you, you want to you know 
offer, but not, you know, dig your heels in too much. And so I think it's good to have books that teach a lesson. And then there's books that is just total enjoyment because we do that if we, you know, watch movies or a show, it may be we want to learn something and sometimes we just want to be entertained and that's okay, I think. Um, I think once you get them hooked on reading, it's so much easier to, you know, say, hey, let's, let, let's try this and this out. And I think they're more willing to do that. So some of these are both a lesson to learn and another just, you know, like my favorite. I grew up loving Nancy Drew. Mystery will always be my favorite genre, although uh, there's been some great historical fiction books. And so those are right up there. And I will tell you, um, I love historical fiction. I think it's so important that um, our children know these historical events, but in a story. So one of my favorite authors is Jennifer Nielsen. Yeah. Um, she writes some wonderful historical novels, um, ones that I've even, I couldn't put down. My husband laughed, I had the book in the car, night divided so this that is about um the wall going up between east germany and west germany and so a family uh lived in east germany and it um was hard to find work and so the father and the brother go to west germany <clears throat> he finds a job but unbeknownst to them that night the wire fence gets put up and so now, how do they get the family across? He could come into East Germany, could, nobody could leave. And so is their journey of figuring out how are we going to escape and get over to West Germany? So Paige Turner, you're learning about historical events and um, entertaining. I just, I could not put it down. So I, was, I had it written down here, um, some of her others, resistance. I mean, so she takes World War II uh, events in Poland, so different countries during the World War II. And so really a lot of good ones. So that those really are great, I like. Um, historical fiction. Another one that I just barely got that was new is called uh, A Wish in the Dark. Um, also, oh, sorry, by Christina Sunvornitz, and I know I'm clobbering up her name, <laughs> but this boy um, is a little boy who was in prison. So I'm trying to think of the country, it's an Asian country. Um, I'm trying to think of which one it is, I apologize. But he's in prison because his mother committed a crime and he was born in prison. And the law there was, even if you are born in prison, you stay there until you reach of a certain age. Well, his mother died in childbirth, birth, so he was an orphan. He looked at the lights in the city and thought life would be wonderful. What and, country? Uh, I want to say Thailand, but I can't remember positively. <laughs> if you look on Goodreads, uh, there's a great, great summary. What but, age is this book for? And and somebody just asked as well. Jennifer, my nine-year-old daughter loves Jennifer Nielsen, mm -hmm. um, and that's about the age it. it yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. I would say for sure. These would, this book, I would say probably fourth grade on up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Jennifer Nelson, same thing. Um, third grade years, a little kind of young for that. So definitely the upper um, elementary, but 
Anyways, Pong thinks life is wonderful and decides he wants to escape. And he is able to escape. But once he escapes, he realizes, what have I done? One thing that they did is they, they gave him a tattoo. And in that country, um, until they properly leave, they give him a mark on that shows, yes, they fulfilled their time and they can now um, be in society. Well, he doesn't have that mark. So now he has no way to feed himself. How's he going to live? He doesn't have the mark. Does he go back into the prison? And unfortunately, the warden's daughter knew him, did not like him. And so he has to hide and figure out how he's going to live. And so the events of the story, this is eye-opening. When I summarize the story, to my students, they looked at me like, why did he have to be in prison? He didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he didn't, did he? So that's a great conversation that you can start with that. It goes along with, there's another uh, book, Born Behind Bars, I'm trying to think, that by Padma Venkataman. <laughs> I apologize again. Uh, kind of the same thing, same Asian country, um, born in prison and his life and what happens to him. So there's, there's a window that our kids have no idea. And what a way to um, have sympathy and understand mm -hmm. someone else's life and country and customs and what's different um by theirs so are these um true stories or are they fiction no they are fiction okay they are are they, fiction. they're based probably upon the societies that exist yeah. yes yes so you know that 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 can spur on okay so then what can we learn you know more about that country and um the things that they do that that maybe we do differently, compare and contrast the two, their lives and, and their lives. Um, so that, that is really good. Uh, another, let's see, there's, you know, I'm trying to decide on this, an older, I'm gonna say older. Okay, an author who's had books, people are familiar with Albert Skye, he wrote Levin Thumps. So that's an older series that's kind of been sitting around. Well, he has written a, a newer series called Wizard for Hire. So if you want just a fun fantasy for your kids, fantasy is not my favorite genre, but I thought I'd just read it just for fun to see. And he hooked me right from the beginning and he wrote three and I, I read all three of them. Really good, fun, clean, uh, a good, good one there. I, another good story that I thought was great, Ghosts by Jason Reynolds. Um, it's a story about a young African-American boy who loves to run. And gosh, I read this a long time ago. If I remember right, um, he would go running and the track coach tried to convince him to run for the team and he didn't have shoes and he had, he wanted some so des desperately, I think he had stolen some shoes and then realized what he did wrong. And he coach said, you know, I'll let you run for the track team. If you take those shoes back, you apologize and if you, you know, live a good life, I will help you out. Um, and that was, that was another really good story, a new perspective of um, life that maybe our kids don't know of not having money and desperate when they really want something that they can't have. 
trying to think. Oh, another good one. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Was How to Make Friends with the Sea by Tanya Guerrero. And this is a little boy who, who's got some uh, issues. Uh, I think it was anxiety and stuff. And his mom is a biologist and they moved to Thailand and they ended up adopting a little girl. And he was astonished by her life being very poor and didn't have much and she wouldn't speak and so him realizing his anxieties and seeing what she was going through is kind of like they helped each other and so he learned to bond with this little girl it was a a, a darling feel good another new window not realizing Boy, some kids in this world live a, a really hard life, but there's some really good things that can come out of um, a friendship and helping one another and that you're not alone. And that reminds me, one of my other favorite ones is called Save Me a Seat by Sarah Weeks. That was a good one. Um, two boys, one boy, from different country that come over to America trying to fit into school. And then this other boy just not fitting in and they become friends and how important friendships are. We all feel like they're not, you know, they're not the popular one at school and feel like the loner but just reaching out to someone who may be, be feeling the exact same way, just needs a friend, a friend to sit by, a friend at recess. So I think that's what, in my mind, I think of the classics, there's, there's a story, there's a, there's a good theme to that story and a good message in that story. And so I look for books that have those messages that are, that are good to share with our kids um, in that sense. So, oh gosh, there's a whole bunch. Um, there's a lot here that I did write down that are just um, either popular or good. One, if your kids are familiar with the book and the movie Wonder, um, I know a lot love that and I just happened I was when I was looking for books I'll find it I came across this book and it was called normal I'm trying to think of where where the author is anyway it is the true story of the boy who had the condition that Augie had in wonder oh it's by Magdalena Newman. So it is her true story with her and her son and the experiences, all the surgeries that he had. And at the very end of the book, he talks about this author came and wanted to interview him. And he told his story to her. And that was RJ Palacio that wrote that wrote wonder. So this is that true story of that boy and what he went through and all the surgeries. So um, I'm glad I came across that true story. Let's see. Can I uh, ask you a question? Because you know, okay. you said it's a movie and a book. And uh -huh. you know, my kids, of course, always love to watch the movies. How do you convince kids? I mean, obviously you read with them and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But do you ever explain to kids the difference between a book and a movie? How do you yeah. explain it? Yes. Um, I will tell them that a movie will never have all the details that a book will have. There's 
I probably think there's only one book that I can remember reading and seeing a movie to say, wow, they did an excellent job that they got a lot of the details. But most movies that are made from books, you don't, you miss out. I, I've told them my daughter was really into um, Lord of the Rings. And so she wanted to read The Hobbit. And so I read it with her. So she'd read a page, I read a page. Anyway, I found out there was a, cha a whole chapter. So, you know, chapters aren't small, but a whole chapter in there that was not in the movie, you know? So we talk about that and say, you know, uh, what's left out? So you may be getting the cherry and the whipped cream of the movie. Read the book and you'll get the whole pie. <laughs> so. I love that, you know, and, and that's like something I, um, like when I read the full complete versions of Les Mis and the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I just had complete love for these characters and how yeah. Victor Hugo went, it, he goes off on tangents all the time about architecture and, you know, all that stuff. And, <laughs> and you know, sometimes it was boring, but yes. <laughs> you, can, you can watch the movie and you don't have this depth of love for these characters that you're just. Exactly. It's, yeah. uh, and, and movies don't, I'm not very visual. So, and I, I like movies, but I forget them. And these characters uh, live inside of you the whole time. That's just. Yes, they become your friends because oh. I feel like you get to know them so well. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, I remember going to a movie, you know, my, my rule of thumb is see the movie first and then read the book because you will constantly, at least I did, I was comparing all the time. No, I envisioned him with dark hair. I envisioned her with, you know, so. <laughs> yeah I, I hear it the opposite all the time you read the book <laughs> first so and then you see the movie but I guess that makes you not as disappointed and you have the characters yeah. in your head <laughs> yeah. yes That's because funny. because even, even with the details you you create that character in your mind and so you have a, a visual in your head and so if if that movie you know comes out and whoever you know hiring that actress and they're acting differently it just it it kind of ruins it for you, you know? <laughs> yeah sometimes I get mad though because I'm like that's not how it looked in my head and I want to be able to create that so yeah yes. so I guess you know oh. I, that's a new take I'll have to <laughs> but then I don't know the ending so I don't care to get to the end of the book you know what I mean so exactly um one more author I, I did want to say for historical fiction is um, Alan Gratz. I will say I like nine, nine out of 10. There's only one book of his that I was not real thrilled. But anyway, the thing I loved about him, and this would be for definitely up, upper elementary because they're, they are war stories. Um, so depending on your child, but what I loved about him, like for instance, his one book, I think it's, is Grenade, it's um, in Okinawa, Japan. And so what he does is he takes the American soldier story and they're invading, right? And it gives that story. And then the, the next chapter will flip over to the Japanese young boy soldier. And it gives that perspective, that story of what he's going through. And you're like, wow, okay, he, he's scared. He's afraid, just like the American soldier. He's scared, he's afraid. They're both there because it's war, not that they wanted to be there. And so he has those two different stories you know, going on back and forth, back and forth. He does the same thing with um, the 9-11 story. We have 
what happened in 9-11, and then about a girl in Iraq and the American soldiers over there. So I love, I love the two-sided, um, it, it gives you more in depth in that way. I think we tend to, and I love, I love war stories. Um, I'm a military family, so, you know, I love our American soldiers, but it was good for me to remember that, you know, those other countries that were fighting, that they had families and loved ones mm -hmm. and those same feelings. You know, and that's my son, he's an avid reader, he's 19, but especially at that age, like that you're saying these books are for around fourth and sixth grade and up, but he was constantly doing like sand play um, battles between good and evil and trying to figure out because mm -hmm. kids have such black and white thinking and they're trying to work through that, who's bad, who's good, you know, and this like, mm -hmm brings it in, hey, they're both bad and good in different ways and they're on different sides, but they have, you know, so especially for this age, this book yeah. sounds very yeah. helpful. Yes, yes, they are. They are really good. So um, give him a try. And, you know, those those that like those stories do love his book and is he's very engaging and really, you know, pulls you in. It's It's not a boring, like, Let's read, let's read history and, you know, kind of the same with if you've ever read Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales, they're never on my shelf. Oh, and oh, they love them. They love them. They're a graphic novel. So here's, here's the funny story, you know, a teacher comes in, um, he needs to read a history book. And I said, this is history. She's like, well, what do you mean? It's just a comic book. <laughs> I said everything in there is history, but he designed it as a graphic novel. And it's kind of like it, I don't know. I, I call it brilliant because these kids are like, oh, it's it, it's a comic book. How fun. And these boys are just, you know, typically it is the boys, but they read them like, oh, this is great. I gotta read the next one. And I just chuckle because it's like, awesome, they're reading history events that really happen. So there's a sneaky way, because I know graphic novels are very, very popular mm -hmm. and it's just exploded. Um, but even let, let them read some because they're, read, they're still reading. It's not, I don't know. Sometimes I think they get a bad rap because it's like, Oh, you're not really reading. Yeah, they are. They're just visually seeing a picture along with reading. So, you know, that's the fun stuff. And they still are reading. Um, so anyway. I've I've used like a, AI chat to say break this into like I'll take the C.S. Lewis book and I'll, I'll say take mm -hmm. the first chapter of C.S. Lewis books and break it into different visuals for a graphic novel so my kids can do a graphic mm -hmm. novel. So the AI chat will create um, a little blurb and then a picture so that they can summarize it, but also understand it more in depth because my kids sometimes have processed like audio. I forget what it's called. Audio yeah. processing disorder. And so I'm trying. Yeah. To yes. And I. You know, and that, that's another important thing, um, because there are some kids that if they just look at a writ, written only, it, they, it, they struggle, they give up. If they can see a visual something along with words, they're going to try and read that, but they're seeing, they're seeing something. So they feel like they're reading and maybe they're not reading everything, but they feel that and they're not, they're, you know, it's success. I think they'll keep trying and they need some, some need visual. I am a very visual learner. And so I'm always aware of anything visual I can do is very helpful. And, and, and touching, I mean, we all have, you know, think of your different senses, you know, some people are more auditory, some people have to see it. And so, use all your senses think of it you know that way mm -hmm. 
If you want, if another good authors, I think it's good to support some of our local authors. Um, Shelly and Chad Morris write some good, good books. Um, their mustaches for Maddie was based on a true story of their own daughter who had brain cancer. And so that was a, a really good book. Um, Did Chad you say mustaches for Maddie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so when she was in the hospital, they asked her, say, Maddie, what, what can we do? What can we do to help you? And she said, mustaches, they make me laugh. And so they literally asked all their friends. And so people started wearing mustaches, silly mustaches, taking pictures and sending them to her. They put mustaches on cars. Um, just the whole community just got involved. And so she was getting a tons of pictures. So while she was going through her cancer treatments, it gave her something to focus on that was positive. And what a great story that was um, for them. But, but their other books, Squint, um, Chad has written the uh, science fiction, The Inventor's Secret. So all of theirs are good, clean books that a parent wouldn't have to worry about, you know, hey, is this going to go against our family standards? Great, great authors. Same with Brandon Mole. Um, very popular uh, books, you know, his Fable Haven, um, those series. And then he's written The Candy Shop War. So great books, great family books. Um, so those local authors really are great. And I, I like to support them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. I'm looking forward to getting that list. I love that you're, that you've read them and, and you're getting me excited to share these with my kids. Yes. And I, you know, um, yeah, I, I just hope that even though they may not all fall in that category of a, of a great classic book, at least it introduces them to stories and it, it gets them on that path of reading. So my lists are just those fun, good reads um, and then several that have good different worldviews, the stories then and then others that are just a fun read. Um, I love Catherine or yeah Catherine Applegate. She wrote the one and only Ivan that was made in the movie. Oh yeah yeah my kids like that one. Yes and she's written the one and only Bob so Bob was the dog. I remember right in that story but her her other books she's written about uh different animals that can talk or whatever willow dean wish tree otter darling darling books mm. so. thank you yeah um I don't know if there are any questions. I have a couple questions, but I don't know if you're finished with your. Yeah, yeah, you and this, yeah. I'll send. I'll, you know, I'll give you the list and send it, and then you can, you know, post that. Okay. Um. So I guess my question was. Let's see. I. I talked about the questions with the supplementing with a video and the nonfiction and, um, you know, finding stuff on Netflix that go around with it and kind of turning it into a, hey, let's see it, let's read about it. I was just wondering, like, reading about it versus watching a video, what's the, what's the difference in impact, in your opinion? Mm. Like with, with the, let's say Netflix on a volcano or a book on volcanoes. Um. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I, I like I like them both because 
you know, visually, I mean, you, it, it comes back to those senses, you know, let's, let's see, let's see what a real volcano looks like. That's awesome and amazing. Um, but let's, let's find facts or let's, you know, that could lead to, let's find the facts. Let's, hey, do you think we can make a volcano, you know, uh, steer it into those, you know, let's do some science together. And wouldn't that be fun? You know, let's learn about it and the facts about it. And let's turn it into a project if we want to do that. Um, so it's more personalized. Yeah. Like, like yeah. at your own pace and you do with it what you want. And yes. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, and then I was thinking about a reward system for the summer. And how do I like I wanted to I wanted to broaden them up for like a big um, trying different types of books. And I like how you said to balance it out. What uh -huh. kind of a reward? Because you want it to be intrinsically rewarding and you sit down and you're all together and do you recommend like a you know how they do at the libraries? Hey, if you read five books, you get this. Like yeah, what yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. So what I I did I used to do. Let's see, I'm trying to think how many years I did. So when I first started, uh, not too long after being a librarian, we did the America's Battle of the Books, and saw how fun that was for our students. And so we each did it at our school. So it gave a list of books that they had to read. And then the fun part was, is then they, the students would um, be formed into teams. And so it would be kind of like, in a sense, a family feud where you would, one team would get asked in, in um, you know, this happens in this, which book did this happen? And then they would have to respond with the title of the book and the author of the book. And then it would go to the next team, you know, and if they, they couldn't guess, the other team could still. Loved it. And this brought in both boys and girls. At first I thought, oh, this will be a girl thing. No, nope, no, nope, boys and girls. Loved it, loved it. And then we decided, hey, why are we paying a company to do this? We could do the same. So then we decided to do within our own district, our own battles. We pick the list of books. We come up with the questions. So then we didn't have to pay another um, group. I bowed out only because um, I didn't have as much parent support after a while. And I, I could not run it plus do my job. It's just too much to do. So, when I went away from that, I felt that it was important to do something. So like this year, our theme was wild about reading. So in my library, I, I decorated, like we're going on a safari. So I made up a paper uh, booklet passport. And so their reading challenge was they had to read one book from each genre. So it's kind of like a book club, you know, someone else had to pick and, you know, you're like, ah, why do I have to read that? And then they realize, oh, I just read a really good book. I'm so glad I had to read that. I wouldn't have picked it, but I had to. So for my students, every genre that they did, I stamped their passport and they would get just a little prize, a pencil a bookmark, you know, something small, but they were excited to get it. And then at the end, when they read, um, I just required eight genres. When they finished that, they got a free book. So there, that was their reward. So I turned it into, I want you to read. And in the end, you're going to get a free book. <laughs> so it's all about reading. <laughs> But I, you know, I've, I've done different reading challenges, but I like those. I've seen like summer bingo, you oh. know, bingo thing where um, read, you know, read under a tent or in a tent, read outside, you know, 
read in different places that they had to mark down. And then when they got bingo, you know, you give them whatever prize you want to give them. <laughs> I love it. That sounds like a lot of fun. You make reading fun. That's your job. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's so amazing. Okay, let's see. I think you answered all my questions. Um, let's see. Do you like the book Lemony Snicket? I'm just curious. Do you like the Lemony Snicket books? You know, I've never gotten into them, and I know they were really popular long ago. It's one of those series, again, that I'm looking at, like, hmm, they're collecting dust, because they were popular when my kids were in, you know, elementary. And so after that many years, um, it's hard sometimes to stir up, hey, try this. Although I will say some of the older books, they've gotten... Uh, or at least the publishers are helping to um, make it better. They will design a, a new updated cover. Mm -hmm. And so it looks like a current, you know, book. And then it's like, oh yeah, I'll try that. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're more willing to give that a try. So good for them to do that because... <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering how books fall out of fashion with kids who they don't do. know anything. You know what I mean? Like they, they do. don't remember this book. So I, as yep. a parent, I recommend, you know, certain books and they're like, no. And I'm like, how come you like something different? What, where is that yep. difference? I don't know if, is it marketing or top subject matter or characters? Like, so yeah. as a parent, I feel like, I'm missing the mark. So I need your like new <laughs> titles and stuff to. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that's a good question. And gosh, I would like to know the answer as well, because I I've got a series that my daughter absolutely loved was Hank the cow dog and he's hilarious. And I know, I wish I had time to read a book with my students, but it just, it, it take, it would take six months to read a small little chapter book. But I knew if they would just read it, they would thoroughly enjoy it. But it looks old. And no, they want to read. But see, they're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, at the bookstore. So if, if they go to the Barnes and Noble, they're, they're seeing all this new stuff. And that's what they're wanting, you know. Dogman's so popular because he's all out there. If you go to the county library, they're seeing that's what they're seeing. And so, you know, I, I think we're the same. And I always laugh at that saying, never judge a, book, uh, judge a book by its cover. And I do it all the time. You, I, I, I just want to go to the, whoever's illustrating this cover, you better make it good because that will sell me. And I think it sells kids as well. We're, we're just the same. You know? Yeah. Well, that's good to know. I mean, just like, that's very interesting too. Yeah. I was wondering if it's the content at all, but I guess it's just the cover. <laughs> it can be just the cover. It truly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what's popular, you know, right now, dragons are the thing. So you got the older ones reading the Wings of Fire, you know, got that dragon. And then you've got the younger ones that, read dragon masters you know third graders can't get enough of them so you know it's like ooh, dragons are, are, are popular right now and mm -hmm. so i think yeah, they like go zombies like people are afraid of zombies and i'm like what how can you be afraid of zombies <laughs> i forget what i was afraid of but <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. i think that's the hardest part of my job and i think most librarians is we've form that attachment with a certain book or certain series. And it is hard to say, oh, it's time for that to retire. It can't, no, that was so good. But that's something we love. And like you said, they, they have no idea. They don't have that attachment. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for all of this. I'm looking forward to your list and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share really quick how I've been organizing my books. Um, okay. and to put your list on there. So okay. let me just um, pull up my 
just a second, please. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And this is how when we, we get your list and we post it. Sorry, my screen is a mess. But I have put in all the books that I own in library thing. And so this is, and don't judge me by my books. <laughs> but, um, so I just, and I, and I just put them in so I could kind of classify where they are. And then I assign them to my kids, um, so the books they have read so they can see the list of what they have. And um, I'm just trying to see all collections. Like this is for Leo to read stuff he might be interested in. And then this is for Naomi to read. And then I move it over. So what I'm going to do with your list is you don't. So I've scanned all of these books with the barcode and it automatically comes inside of here. And then um, with your list, you can also add books and just type in the title of the book. So even if you don't own it, you could see it on your list. You could get it on Amazon or you could go to the library. But at least you have a reminder of this is to buy, to purchase, to go to the library so that we can get all these awesome books that you've recommended for us. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I know I was quickly breezing going, oh, yeah, I read that too. Oh, I love Esperanza Rising. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I actually went to Goodwill and bought $200 worth of books and you buy four, you get the fifth one free because I wanted to get all the classics. And so now they're all organized and, um, yeah. and, and movies as well. I don't know. I think I'm just like being more hopeful than anything, but yeah. I, okay. I'll let everybody know my secret because I really shouldn't because then I'll be competing with you, but there's a store, a store in Salt Lake, NPS store in Salt Lake. Um, they have, it's part grocery store. And then the other side is like a few clothing, office stuff. Well, they have boxes of books and I don't know when they get them in or whatever, but I go there and they are $2 a book. What, what's it called again? NPS store. Okay. There, there's one in Layton, but they don't have the books like the Salt Lake one has. Um, I think it's on 1700 South. Anyway, um, I just dig through those books and I found some pretty good ones. And I'm like, man, these are brand new books. Some are, you can tell, came from another school, but they look brand new. I don't know why they're getting rid of them. But anyway, $2 a book not bad <laughs> that's great well thank you this is a wealth of information and as soon as you send me the list I'm, i'll post it underneath all of the videos that we've i've shared through the different facebook pages and um okay okay sounds well, good have a good, good. night thanks carlin okay. thank bye. you bye